drag them along the floor like that, you'll scrape it. They're too heavy to lift, sir. Well, if you won't stack them and carry a couple each. Oh, excuse me. Well, you do know how to unstack chairs, don't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Didn't tell him not to scrape the floor, did they? Yeah. Oh, Stu, you don't put butter on hot dog rolls. Well, how am I supposed to know? When have you ever had a hot dog with butter on the roll? Right, all right. What are you doing now? Baking a cake. What's it look like? We've done all the bread for the sandwiches. What is it with you? I mean, you don't do the catering unless some of the boys do it with you. Yeah, every time I touch something, you seem to rock me. You shouldn't be so useless, should you? Thanks. Don't be such a big baby. <laughs> I think I know what backswords in another life. Oh, yeah? And geese who crack the whips, you know, when they're building the pyramids. The slave drivers. Oh, that's the one. Hands off. Hardly one, I'm starving. The sandwiches aren't for the kids, they're for the visiting VIPs. For the who? The people who made the decision to throw us in with Brookdale and Rodney Bennett. Are they coming here tonight? Oh, well, let me in the door, let alone feed them. I guess they're not dogged in. Yeah, you could have half one. <laughs> A dry roll. The sausages ain't arrived yet. We're expecting them with the drinks. Oh, no point in hanging around then, is there? McGuire? Not a lot. Anyway, it sounds as though someone's cracking his whip again. Yeah. Oh, no! Right, line those chairs up against this wall here, right? Hey, steady on, let me give you a hand. Hey, look, this is my system. Oh, I don't think you've left anybody in much doubt about that. You know how long it takes to build a system like this? Well, I've... Uh, Years. I know every wire, every circuit in this mountain of sound, and no one touches it but me. No one. It's personal, you know? Oh, well, uh, if you don't need a hand, uh... Hey, come on, you lot. Oh, well, you haven't disappeared off the face of the earth, then? No, sir. Where's your mates? I went there, sir. You don't really want me to answer that, do you? No, sir. No, sir. Wise choice. Now, listen, I've just carted this lot in here single-handed, and that, as they say, is my lot. So you can take those trucks back to the van driver, you round up the rest of the workforce, get them back here, and get this lot shifted down to the bar double quick. Message received and understood? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what are you doing standing here? I suppose you're too busy to lend a hand. Silly question, really. Hello. They don't really eat this stuff, oh, do they? They'll shift them soon enough tonight. It's getting somebody to move them now is a problem. Labour problems? Oh, something like that. Hmm. Here, is this lot with you? Uh, no. What do you want? We're from Rodney Bennett, sir. Oh, yes. Where's your uniforms? You ain't wearing them, sir. One more statement of the obvious from anybody today and I... get dirty, sir. We've been sent over to help out. Carry things and help them beyond the bar. Stuff like that. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? Son, your sense of timing is immaculate. Right, there they are. Pick them up and follow me. Was it you, sir? Sorry? Oh, I bet it was. You seem to have the advantage of me, precious. What she means is, was it you that asked Glenroy to bring his sound system in? Oh, yes, sir. He told me all about it at the UN conference. Sounded most impressive. Oh, it's impressive, all right. He's still stacking up for speakers now. It looked like the Empire State Building by the time he's finished. Oh, so it's going to be loud, is it? You could say that. Well, maybe I could uh, ask him to turn the volume down. Oh, you could ask. The thing is, if Glenroy brings his sound system along, you get all of it, including the records. Was that bad? No. Not if you like heavy reggae. And I mean heavy reggae. You don't, I take it. Oh, yeah, we all do. But that's all he ever plays. And I don't fancy spending the night being lifted off my feet by the vibrations from Sir Lord Glenroy's booming bass line. Well, surely he'll let us play some other type of music. What, like the Nolans or Cliff Richard? Well, not quite that extreme, you know, but uh, something different. You can suggest it if you like. But give me time to take cover. Only Glenroy's records ever get played on Glenroy's turntable. You've got to do something about it, sir. <sighs> this is a 
joke. Anyone would think they've never seen one of these before. Are you sure you've got nothing smaller? Positive. Well, then I'm sorry, you're just going to have to wait until we get some more money. Will I? Danny, now. Let you stack on It's Mr. Remington, Nigel. Come on, stop pushing. Hello, Oxford. Mr. Noel Glaxo. Now, hang on a minute. Glaxo's got a whole five pound note all to himself. Anybody at the back missed it? No? Well, you can stop waving it about now. Everybody's seen it. I was trying to get some change. Yeah, well, don't look at me. I never carry change. Makes my trousers sag. Oh, here we are. Fifty cash, Lawrence. Mustache. Thanks, Bill. It'll have to be fifty pence pieces. I thought you'd never part company with that fiver. Yeah. Well, take care he doesn't organise a reunion with it before the night's out. Well, what do you mean? I mean, cash boxes have been known to go missing. So be careful, all right? Right. Do you think he'll try anything? I don't know. He's got some sort of villain on his mind that stands out a mile. Takes one to know one. What do you reckon, a fight? No, no nothing like that. Well, what then? I just got this definite feeling that Glatz on Ellington doesn't plan to go empty-handed tonight. What, sound system? <laughs> you wouldn't dare breathe on there. Glenn would rip his head off his shoulders. So it's got to be the door money. I don't know, Nige. But just to be on the safe side, mate, keep my under observation in there, right? And I'll look after the door, mate, yeah? Who will miss out on all the talent? Nigel, when Jimmy McLaren glides onto that dance floor, mate, there's never any shortage of talent. You should know that. See you later. Would have been quicker to get ourselves. Arranged. So that comes back to let those rugby bit of creeps be on the bar. You lot run around me. You're supposed to be. That's why. Don't bother me. Let them get on with it. I'd rather go and enjoy myself. You go. I'll stay here. What for? In case anything else needs fetching. But you don't even know if she's coming. And don't say who. You know I'm talking about Jackie. She a beer. You're going to see her sometime. I'm not worried about seeing her. Well, I am. It's more the fact of her getting off with someone else. That's what I can't handle. She might not. Oh, it's up to her. It's nothing to do with me anymore. So come into the hall. No, I'd rather stay here and be on my own, all right? OK. I'll see you in there if you change your mind, all right? the Americans might call a crossed wire situation, huh? <clears throat> Look, uh, I realise now that you'd arranged with Mrs. McCluskey to be our disc jockey for tonight. Uh, but the thing is, well, nobody told me and I've sort of... Ask Glenn why to do it. But why does it have to be me, though, that stands down? Well, if I did approach Glenn Wright to tell him that his services were no longer required, I think it'd have taken the rest of the evening to dismantle his equipment. Yeah, and let's face it, Pogo, compared to Glenway, this is you think we'll be able to reproduce after volume we need in the hall. Whereas with Glenroy, we've got all the decibels we need. Plus a few more for good measure. And Glenroy's got two decks. I could use his stuff and we could take turns. That's fair. You really want me to suggest that to Glenroy, do you? You don't uh, fancy taking the night off and enjoying yourself? Man, it, oh, sir. I mean, he wants to practice. He's going to hire himself out as a DJ when he leaves school. And he's been practising his pattern for weeks. And now, here's a song for all you lovers down there in the dark. <laughs> oh, I see. So tonight was a sort of trial run for a future business venture. That's beside the point, sir. Is it? I'd have thought it was very relevant. No, sir. No. What's relevant is that Mrs McCluskey expects me to do the records tonight. And if I'm not up there doing them, she'll want to know why. Point taken, Patterson. I'll have a word with Glen Roy. For the good it will do. I knew I shouldn't have washed it. It looks all right, Faye, honest. Ta-da! Annette! You look terrific. Slave this dress. 
No bruises. No, she's all right now, Mum, Mum. It's nice to spend ages looking in the oil for you two. Yeah, we ain't been in there yet. Faye's been messing about with her hair for the last 20 minutes. She wants to look her best from the boys from Brookdale. Or Rodney Bennett. Anything but Grange Hill. As long as you don't get near one particular boy from Rodney Bennett. Don't tell me. Stuart Parker. Who else? You reckon you got your chances? I've already made sure that he's noticed me. Yeah, I'll bet. Is he all right? All right? Taste is more the words. Yeah, but he knows it and he's not going to get off of me that easily. I'm getting a definite come on from Christine Neverson. Well, who's she with? Claire Scott. Claire Scott? Are you mad? Her and Stu Pot have been going around like a married couple all term. Well, she's having nothing to do with him tonight. You could freeze on the look she's giving him. Yeah. Yeah, so let's move. Nigel, what about Glaxo? He ain't said boo to anybody all night. He just stands near the bar drinking coke. And if he's behaving himself, he's definitely up to something. Look, you said yourself, a bloke like that ain't nothing without his mates to back him up. Well, he's on his own out there. He's harmless. Now, come on. Nigel, not until the money's safely stashed away. Got it? Say something to me. Hi. Say something to me. What? Anything. I just want to check the mere drums and stuff around the place. You know, blasted out of existence. Oh, Glenn, what does go a bit heavy on the folio? Say that again. Have you been here long? Quite a while. How did you find me? Who said I was looking for you? Oh, I do so. I was actually. Kevin said you were here. Oh, did he? Then Kevin's got a big mouth. I know I should never have told him about you. What are you laughing at? I was having a stop moaning, will you? Ask me to dance. What's wrong with you asking me? I thought I just did. Oi, you! Want some more cokes? Get lost, Marzette. Do you know him? Grand Marzette, he goes to my school. How you got it wrong? Him and the other kids behind the bar from Rodney Bennett. The other kids behind the bar are Gavin Cousins, Danny Wolfs and John Whitfield, and they all go to Brookdale. Look, Sam, you're still at the bar featuring Twice Rodney. Okay, go off. Are you going to be much longer? Two minutes, all right? Have you done a sharp shop yet? Suzanne! You look great. What are you doing here? I'll oh, go if you like. You know, it's a joke. I'm mean, paying to get, you, get back into Grand Jill. Uh, I don't need uniform or anything like that, Good grief, it sounds like we're the world. No, it's only Demroy. He's doing the sounds tonight. On his own? Oh, well, no one else is allowed to touch his stuff. No. I mean, on his own. Oh, yeah. Completely unaccompanied. But I don't see why that should interest you. Oh, sorry. I'm forgetting my man. This is Paul and this is Andy. We'll be at college next year. Oh, so you're not going no. out? No. We had our interviews the same afternoon. That's how we met. You're going to college, Suzanne? Yeah. You realise after a couple of months that the world isn't queuing up waiting for you. Well, this is it. So, it's back to O levels and revising study periods. Only this time I want to do it. Oh, well, good for you, Suzanne. Yeah, Mr. McGuffey, because he helped. Listen, back to Lemroy. Mm -hmm. Do you reckon you could entice him down from the stage? Well, who do the music? Oh, we've got Pogo on the um, substitute bench, complete with his own record collection. It's worth a try. See you later, girls. Bye. Bye. Money safely stashed away, is it? That's right. So, what would you say if I asked you for a quick spin around the floor? I'd say no. No. Love you, love you. No. We've missed out on those two now. Terrific. Mr. Oh. Mills, just come with me, please. He went that way, sir. Hey, hold on, what's happening? Sam and so Baxter, that the kids from behind the bar from Bookdale, not Ronnie Bennett. What difference does that make? It makes a lot if they're glucks or rum and mates, doesn't it? The bar money, Nigel. I didn't think of that. Come on. <laughs> Push off, I can handle this. Go on. What's the 
guess all about them. Bit busy tonight, lads. Not really. Not really? Oh, I think you're being modest. They've been in and out of that bar buying fizzy drinks like there was a drought on. You must have been rushed off your feet. We checked the cash box. The Tykings are definitely alive. Doesn't tally, does it, lads? All right, turn your pockets down. You ain't going down my pockets. Don't you give me lip, son. Easy, Mr. Baxter. I've been with them the whole evening. I'd certainly have noticed if they'd been putting money in their pockets. With all due respect, Mr. Keating, where else do you think it is? Come on, turn your pockets out. You accuse us of thieving? Well, I know you're not beyond lying, don't I? Now, make your mind up. You either do it for me or for the police. <laughs> Stuart Parker says you match our time, it's going to burn an hour through the back of your eight. Don't you think it's time you showed a bit of interest? I'll get around to it. It won't hurt him to get dangly a little while longer. Still don't see why Baxter had to let him go. It wasn't Baxter, it was Keaton. Frighten we might start some bad feeling between Grey and him. I stir up bad feeling. They're the ones who nicked the money. You don't know that for sure. They were all searching, none of them had it. They're feeling it somewhere. Where? They never left the bar all night. Don't matter where. Most of the bar takers are missing. It's obvious they're involved. Yeah, but it does matter where. Because you've got to be able to prove it. So you tell me where the money is. Glaxo! You say he's been up and down from the bar all night. Yeah. How could, look, how could they slipped it to him? I mean, keep him standing there watching all night. Easy. Glaxo buys a drink, right? Gets him a 50 pence piece. Gets a fiver's worth of change. Keaton wouldn't have been up to see what was going on. It's not with all the comings and goings and the flashing nights. What are you doing? I think it's time for a little chat with Mr. Remington. Why did they let him go? Man? What's going on here? How about a bit of service? I think you've had all the service you're going to get for one night. You've been opening your mouth right? No, I have. You want to be careful. Or you'll go the same way as your mate. Oh, yeah. What mate's that? The one that don't float too well. Here. Is that right? I hear they're introducing a new sports trophy next year. The Jeremy Irving Underwater Swimming Cup. Oh, I know this summer. Go on, go. I owe you one, remember? Jimmy the Mug McLaren locked in the warehouse. Now, I was going to overlook that. You know, do my bit for the spirit of togetherness. But that last remark was in very bad taste. I can't overlook that. So, what are you going to do? I want to teach you some style. I've already told you about coins making your trousers sag. And when Jimmy McLaren offers advice to someone like you about looking cool, you really ought to take it. Sir? Sir? Seen Glenway yet? Uh, not quite. Douglas has been telling me about the problem. I don't envy you. Actually, it might be better if someone like you had a word with Glenroy. Oh, no, no. You have a word with him. You come with me. Mm. I'll remember this. I don't care. All right, Pogo. Get your stuff together. You're on. But you know, it's, it's all gone quiet. She's right. Glenroy's waiting to show you how to use his decks. So get a move on. Suzanne, it's a miracle. How did you manage it? Just asked him. Huh. There's all of us terrified to go near him, and all we need to do is just ask him. I'm not sure it would have been all that easy for you, sir. I mean, I'm not sure Glenroy would have been that eager to dance with you. Oh, so that's how you managed to lure him from the turntables, eh? Well, can't be in two places at once, can he, sir? Well, I'm so... Yeah, these pogos at me. Certainly done me a favour, anyway. Well, she's done herself one as well. She's been after Glenroy for ages. Precious. Ah, oh, so everybody's happy. Not quite everybody. You don't think you could work another little miracle, could you? Such as? Well, like getting Stu Pot and Claire back together again before they drive us all nuts. Get off! Get off! Get off! McLaren! Get off! Flavin! What on earth do you think you're doing? Just collecting the bar money. Uh, hi and uh, welcome to uh, Pogo's Ace Disco. And this is the first record you can uh, put down. <laughs> Lucky we got the money back. Oh, I don't know what's the matter with me. 
Brookdale boys who had never got past me two years ago. The old alarm bells would have started to ring and I sniffed them out right off. Yeah, they had everyone else, but they wouldn't take it personally. But I do take it personally. And when we did collar them, I handled it badly. I should have known they had an accomplice in there. I just wasn't thinking. All right. No harm done. No, not this time, anyway. Dance. I'm not so keen on this record. You could dance with two with your mates. Yeah, well, they've got partners now, haven't they? Serve you, if you want one. I think I'll wait for something better. <laughs> no, I mean the record, not you. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't recognise you in this night. Recognise me? Well, what with the crown jewels and the way you're performing, you must be royalty. Sorry to have bothered you, your highness. We've finished playing Sherlock Holmes yet. We need us to over there if we don't hang about. I don't care. Let's just get a move on. What was that you were saying about a little spin on the dance floor? I saw... What, is it worth me repeating it? Could be. What's made you yes. change your mind? Well, let's just say that with Puggle up, they can try in the volume. I'll stand more chance of hearing all those sweet nothings you're going to whisper in my ear. My arm, my dear. Oh, that's choice, isn't it? Then once again... What a chance I am to dance, Rob. You asked. No thanks, sir. Would you like to dance, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you dancing to music like this. Oh, wait. I thought Barbara might be here tonight. Just to see her. Now and again, but Lambeth's a long way, you know. It's not that far. It is tonight. <laughs> Everything appears to have gone very smoothly in my absence, so let's celebrate the new school, shall we? Yes, and its new head teacher. It's possible, Mr. Smart. We'll have to wait and see. Yes, everybody appears to be very nicely integrated. Patterson's brought them together very well. Would you like to dance, Mrs. McCluskey? Yes, thank you. Here's a spooky record for you. Love is down there in the dark. So true, funny how it seems. Always in time, but never in line for dreams. I can't unwind since the exams. I know I'm not going to get the grades I need. Well, not that again. Well, don't go. Listen, Stu, I've got better things to do than stand here all night listening to you panicking about your exam results. Don't it matter to you, then? What? Whether we're in the sixth form together next year. Ooh. 
Oh, is that what you're so worried about? It's part of it. Oh, we've missed the record now. No, we ain't. Here, Pogo. Yeah? Play that one again, will ya? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Hey.